Have you ever wondered how these robots move so realistically? And did you know there is a great reason why these robots were designed so minimally? But despite that minimalism, have an incredible amount of personality. I mean, they're just boxes on legs. That's no accident. In today's third episode of Walt Disney Imagineer and Explain, we'll start with the basic designs that bring these robots to life, and we will work our way up to more advanced concepts once we have that foundation of learning established. Because I cannot wait to break down for you the technology that makes them possible, the genius design that adds in all of that characteristic. So by the end of this video, you'll not only understand how these robots are able to walk and keep balance, but also the secrets behind their experience expressive performances, Bricky here, join me as we uncover the new fascinating technologies behind Walt Disney Imagineering bipedal robot characters. Are you ready to robot? Let's go. But how do all of these technologies come together to bring these adorable characters to life? Interestingly, these robots don't have arms. Keeping the design simple with just one set of limbs make them an efficient proof of concept. These droids are sophisticated demos of bigger ideas to come. Let's talk about learned base control. Simply put, this means the robot's control system is smart enough to understand how it moves and can adjust itself to move better based on what it learns. It records data on what works and what doesn't, and then adjusts its movements based on past successes. The magic doesn't stop there. And the fans absolutely love them because they are so adorable and have so much personality. When you see them do their performances, they win everybody over. What truly makes these droids relatable is the character animation. Even though they are just boxes on legs, they act out sequences that feel familiar to us. It feels like the droid is shaking its head or nodding but it's really just pre-programmed motions mimicking human behavior. And one of the things that I love pointing out about technology is these amazing little droids. This is the worst version of these we'll ever see. These little autonomous characters are the beginning. Where will it go from here? To bring these robots to life, Imagineers first work on mechanical design. Then they create animations while using special tools to study how the animations and mechanical designs both work together. All along the way, making tons of adjustments, test and adjust, trying to get it correct over and over again. But what kind of tools do they use and how do they eventually refine all the characters' movements? Because what we're seeing nakedly as one movement is actually this little robot conducting a symphony of actions, all happening at once. Walt Disney Imagineering keeps improving the robot's design by creating and testing parts that work well with the software. This helps the robot learn and act more like a real character. The motions we see are created with a tool Disney has developed called Gate Generation. Gate generation is how the droids create and choose the movements for their legs and body to help them walk along a path. There are different methods to do this, like using rules, behaviors, or specific controls. Adding several technologies together at once, WDI also uses freeform animations. A freeform animation doesn't use footsteps. Instead, it moves the whole robot's body and its center of mass. This type of animation is used for motions like bouncing up and down, shaking its hips, or changing its posture to look attentive or thoughtful. In the simulation design phase, these tools help study the movement of the character and estimate kinematic and dynamic requirements. Kinematic helps WDI understand how a machine moves in different situations. Dynamics helps WDI figure out what forces are needed to make it move. So kinematics is about developing the movement while dynamics explains why the movement happens. This makes their performance feel real because it seems like the robot is interacting with its environment in real time. In reality, these are all tasks the robot learned in a laboratory, not in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. The robot is reenacting a movement from days ago, but reacting to a situation happening right now in front of your eyes making you think the robot is living in the present when actually it's a pre-programmed puppet from the past. 
Now the final design of these robots includes actuators that are placed inside of the legs and neck, which are basically the animated parts of the robot. They were also given speakers, light bulbs for eyes, antenna, and other details that would be able to flesh out their personalities. The finalized robot design has five actuators in each leg. An actuator is a device that makes a machine move. These actuators give the robot human-like foot, ankle, hip, and knee movements. But notice, the knee bends backward compared to a human or most animals. This not only makes it look more otherworldly, but also helps balance the front-mounted neck. Speaking of the neck, there are four more actuators that allow it to raise, lower, and twist. This adds a lot of human-like communication by puppeteering the head with movements and emotions we easily recognize from our own body language. All of these different features working at once or at different times is what creates the personality. It's what makes them feel feisty and lovable and what one day here in Galaxy's Edge got a whole group of people cheering on two robots as they had a dance off. I couldn't believe what I was watching, but people were so excited about cheering between the two different robots and the personality that the robots gave off in this dance off. It was a moment when I really started to look at robotics and non-human characters inside of the park in a whole different way. The robot also has a set of show functions, including speakers, actuated antennas, illuminated eyes, and a headlamp. These features, along with the audio, are considered show functions, which means they don't affect the robot's ability to move, but are crucial for expressing its character. Take this video clip for example. The robot, looking down the stairs, turning on its headlamp, and looking around with its eyes, has nothing to do with the robot walking down the stairs. That is a show animation before the robot does what it's been programmed to do a thousand times, walk downstairs. The onboard PC battery and other electronics allow the robot to roam freely for up to one hour. But I find it amazing with such minimal features how these little droids create such big personalities. It's just blinking eyes, the wiggling of a robotic butt, but there is something about the way that they bob their heads, the way they communicate with each other. They have a real huge personality, kind of like how C-3PO had so much personality he could rub you the wrong way, but R2-D2 was just perfect. Just enough sass, just enough characteristics to be like, yeah, R2 is awesome. So how do Imagineers make the robots walk and move in such accurate ways? Imagineers use something that's called reinforcement learning. This type of programming allows the little droids to learn how to balance and track their own animations, keeping record of what's successful, giving it the ability to make split time decisions just like you or I would. And how once again, we think they're doing one thing at a time, but the engineering inside of this robot is making hundreds of decisions all at once. Reinforcement learning is a machine learning technique that teaches software how to make decisions to achieve the best results. It's based on trial and error learning, much like how humans learn to achieve their goals. For our droids, this means interacting with an environment and learning through rewards, like being able to keep walking and navigating, and punishments like falling over. This helps the droid find the best actions to maximize its total reward, which is reaching its final destination. Eventually, reinforcement learning creates a control policy. A control policy is like a set of rules or procedures that help the robot know what to do and how to move. It's like the robot's instructions that ensure it works correctly and avoids making mistakes. The simulator uses real-world data to make the robot's movements look real. It has a controller that helps the robot move like it would in the real world. During training, the robot learns how to walk and move by following different commands, which helps it become better at moving naturally. 
The robot practices movements in a simulator using real-world data. This training helps the onboard AI learn how to navigate different terrains. So when the robot is in the real world, it can move smoothly and adapt to its surroundings. Now the robots have an animation engine included inside of them. This is what allows their operators to control them by using joysticks, no different than the various different remote controlled vehicles and toys that we all had as kids. But there's a major difference here. A lot of the things that we played with could only do one thing at once. These droids are capable of all kinds of intelligent learning, allowing them to create tons of complex animations all at once, which allows them to create seamless and expressive performances. So let's break down how these remote controls are able to give so much more control to these little droids than we ever had with the toys that we played with growing up that also came with controllers, but this is next level control. Imagine you're playing a video game where you control a robot with a joystick to make the robot move smoothly and look like it's really alive. Disney Imagineering uses a special system called an animation engine. Here's how it works. The operator, who's like the player in our game, uses a joystick to give the robot commands. These commands are combined with a bunch of pre-made animations stored in a database. Think of these animations like a library of fun moves that the robot can do. Now walking, as we've explained, is a bit tricky. But when the operator moves the joystick, the animation engine decides which moves to use from its library. It sends the right signals to the robot to make sure it's doing the correct action. This could be walking, turning its head, or shaking its robot butt. And a lot like Lion King or Coco over in DCA, yeah, you can see the engineers that are controlling them with the joysticks, but much like Lion King and the Coco puppet or Marikat that you'll see over at DCA, you quickly forget that those Imagineers are there and you get very quickly into the performance, the personality, and just how these little guys get everybody around them so excited. But the real magic is this system allows the operator to create performances that look natural and dynamic. So when you see the robot moving around, it's like watching a well-choreographed dance. The robot responds to the joystick commands in real time, making it seem like it's really interacting with its environment and the people that are around it. But if you're wondering, how does the droid know how to react to all these different environments? How can it figure out instantly what sort of surface or grade or textures that it's walking across? What's the dizzy magic that allows these droids to make split second decisions like you or I, as we would walk across a hill, stairs, wet surface? You know, if you think about it, when you're just doing what feels like nothing, your brain is still making hundreds of decisions all at once, which is exactly what artificial intelligence does. It's taking tons and tons of computer learning, but stacking so many of them at the exact same time that it feels very human-like. Like right now, I'm thinking about how hard my arm hurts holding up this camera, how my neck feels sunburnt while looking into the camera, making sure that all my meters are reading at once and delivering this information to you. But I'm also thinking about how I want to get home and watch House of Dragons with my wife and how I want to get off my feet because they're killing me. But I'm also thinking about how I'm going to edit this video and I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy it and hit subscribe to Hey Bricky so I can keep making three quality videos each week. I mean, think about what you're doing right now. How many different decisions are going through your head all at once while you're watching this stupid video? It's literally one of the most fun things I've seen happen in Galaxy's Edge, which goes to my theory that this place is a beautiful canvas that future Star Wars stories will be told. And this is just one of many to come, I hope. I can't, I can't promise that, but I hope that this is one of many Star Wars stories to come. I mean, hey, we got a fireworks droid now. It just seems to be happening. Slow rollout, unpredictable. But here, my friends, is the mind-blowing part. All of these technologies work together seamlessly. The robot's onboard AI or artificial intelligence is constantly processing information, deciding how to move, balance, and express its own emotions. It's like the robot has its own brain, capable of adapting to new situations instantly. I, I hope that one day soon you get to see these little guys cruising through a galaxy's edge near you, because I was here on the opening day when they let them out, 
And I was kind of skeptical, but man, oh man, I cannot break down how cool this technology is. When you see these robots in action, remember that it's not just a machine. It's a marvel of modern engineering. It's a testament to the power of blending technology with storytelling. And that is the real Disney magic, creating something that feels alive and captivates our imaginations. Where would you like to see Disney take this tech next? Character meet and greets? A robotic parade performer? A free roaming robot show? Or my favorite, a dark ride where the animatronics are autonomous robot actors that can walk, climb, jump, and navigate freely through their show scene. No longer chained to a base, but free to move like you or me.